Canada is, relatively speaking, an exceptionally young country. Officially formed in 1867, our vast North American homeland spent much of its infancy on the fringes of global affairs. However, over the course of the 20th century, Canada has managed to transform itself from the quiet, relatively inconsequential nation it once was into the distinguished global figure we recognize it as today. Many of these changes, as the attentive viewer might have anticipated, came about as adaptations to the global conflicts which plagued much of the 20th century. Because of this, the period following the end of the Second World War serves as a fascinating area of study. It is a period where Canada makes the proverbial transition from the trials and tribulations of adolescence into the maturity of adulthood. In this video, we will be discussing this period of transition from the years 1945 to 1967. The importance of the Second World War on Canada's development as a country cannot be understated. It was the first war that Canada entered not as a condition of Mother Britain's involvement, but of its own sovereign accord. During the war itself, Canadian troops were involved in many integral battles and operations while Canadian industries provided a constant flow of vital resources to the Asian and European fronts. These contributions both reinvigorated Canada's domestic economy while establishing a positive international reputation which would pave the way for later involvement in global affairs. Following the war, Canada experienced a period of economic prosperity which was heavily spurred by the discovery of new oil sands in the province of Alberta. Additionally, undoubtedly resulting from the positive post-war fervour which swept the nation, we see the birth rates skyrocket, giving way to a new generation of Canadians aptly named the Baby Boomers. Also at this time, we see a slight uptick in immigration, most of which was a result of the mass dispossession caused by the wartime ravaging of Europe. Although most of the population was sick of war and all the stress it brought, a new conflict was on the horizon, the consequences of which could very well spell not just the end of the newly invigorated nation of Canada, but of the human race as a whole. I am talking, of course, about the Cold War. In the years following the Second World War, it became evident that the world was becoming divided along ideological lines. On one side was the capitalist West, led by the United States, and on the other was the communist East, led by the Soviet Union. In 1946, an incident occurred where a Soviet diplomat by the name of Igor Gozenko, who was working in Ottawa, revealed to the public that his country had been spying on the other allied nations. This Gozenko affair, as it is now commonly referred to as, sparked public and governmental outcry which only served to further divide the already fractured relationship between East and West. Eventually, diplomatic relations between the two sides broke down, leading many Western nations to join an alliance called the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO for short, and the Soviet Union and its various satellite states to form the Warsaw Pact. However, the stakes of this particular conflict were higher than any in history. This is because both sides possessed enough nuclear power to destroy each other ten times over. As a result, these two factions would never actually end up fighting each other directly, which is why this period of time, lasting from 1947 to 1991, is known as the Cold War, a hot war meaning direct combat between parties. Instead, the tension of this era was expressed in a series of other quote-unquote proxy conflicts, conflicts which occurred on foreign soil and didn't directly involve the West fighting the East. The Korean War was one such proxy conflict, one which Canadian troops were fairly involved in. As a whole, Canada made a considerable number of contributions to the West's Cold War effort. Our armed forces took part in a number of peacekeeping operations around the world and, on many occasions, Canadian political and military officials were vocally critical of what they perceived as excessively aggressive American foreign policy. All this marks Canada's growing presence on the world stage and the increased confidence that our elected officials carried themselves with as a result. While most of the public eye during the period of 1945 to 1967 was understandably directed at the looming threat of nuclear annihilation, there were a number of domestic events which occurred that are worth mentioning. In 1946, Viola Desmond, a black Canadian woman, publicly challenged state segregation policy when she refused to move from a whites-only section in a Nova Scotian movie theatre. This paved the way for the future alleviation of racist policies in Canada. In the 1950s, we have the infamous Avro Aero controversy. After the development of an exceptionally advanced supersonic aircraft nicknamed the Aero by the Canadian aerospace company Avro, Prime Minister Diffenbacher insisted on its discontinuation and cancelled the manufacturing program in its entirety. Many Canadians were outraged, suggesting that the Aero was an excellent national achievement and that its cancellation would betray the budding Canadian aerospace industry. 
1964, a brand new national flag was introduced, which completely did away with the old Union Jack design and replaced it with a red maple leaf on a red and white background. This further indicates Canada's drift away from its colonial roots and the emergence of a unique national identity. Then, throughout the 1960s, we see a period known as the Quiet Revolution in the province of Quebec. This was a period of rapid economic and social development which, on one hand, saw a great secularization and liberalization of many of the province's institutions, but on the other, the rise of a particularly strong wave of Quebec nationalism. Overall, the period of 1945 to 1967, while lacking in the action and drama of previous eras, served as a pivotal time in the development of the Canadian identity both domestically and internationally. It was a time of prosperity, a time of change, and a time of maturation of one of the great countries of the West. <laughs>